so first of all, congratulations on Marmalade. Um, I've seen it. I just think it's an absolutely awesome movie. Um, and yeah, kudos. I mean, great writing, great di- di- directing. Um, how does it feel now doing press interviews, not as an actor, but as a filmmaker? I know how wild, right? It's like, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll say it's less about me, I, I suppose, but <laughs> maybe it's more about me now that I have two titles. But uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a bizarre uh, it's it's a it's a bizarre experience. I think to to talk about something that it that feels like that quite literally came from my brain that's uh, now finally coming to coming to the screen. Mm. I mean, you're no stranger to to the screen, uh, to the small screen and the big big screen. So, what sparked this transition to go into writing and also directing? You know, it, it's I, I think a, a common um, answer from a lot of actors, which is just reading a ton of bad scripts for a long <laughs> for a long time. You know, it's like. You know, you read enough bad scripts and you're like, I could do this, you know, but, you know, you can also say that for many, many years before you finally say, well, can I do this? You know, Uh, which is what I attempted to do. I think I it it all starts with characters, you know, and and Mm. that's where I've spent the majority of my career is playing these characters. And uh, I think a, a question that I could never answer as an actor was people would ask me all the time, if you could play any character, what would it be? And and sort of it's incredibly difficult to answer because you wait for auditions to come in, you wait for other people to write things for you. Um, but if you have the opportunity to uh, to create something out of thin air, what would it be? Um, so so I, I, I took that to test and uh, and and these were the characters that, that really resonated with me and sort of ran with that. So let's talk about this masterpiece that is Marmalade, which I've got to say is such a great journey to go on and so cleverly written. And uh, I can't wait for audiences to watch it because it, it's just so well done. It really, really is. I mean, what inspired this story? Where did this story come from? Uh, was was there anything that, 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 that inspired this direction? Yeah, I mean, I grew up watching films, that, you know, the films that really resonated with me or, you know, 80s 90s films especially you know anything that had bright colorful characters pulpy kind of fun heist things uh you know films like raising arizona edward scissorhands true romance like these were the films that really um struck me as an artist uh so when i when i wanted to construct something i knew that it was going to sort of be in that universe in that sort of world so that was always that was the goal um again i knew i wanted a heist i knew i i i I love this sort of bonnie and clyde genre Mm. um which i I just always found fascinating of sort of lovers on the run and basically people doing bad things that the audience really roots for i think is 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 quite a fascinating notion um (laughs) So how could I take that and then play into that, but also turn it upside mm. down? So that was that, that was kind of how it all started to come together. I mean, the thing I, I love about this movie is that there's such a mix of humor and drama, uh, and and it takes you up and down. It's just fantastic. It's like a roller roller coaster. It really, really is. So when writing Marmalade, um, how hard was it to say to yourself as a writer, "I'm done," and then put the pen down? Because I can imagine, I mean, how yeah. many times did, did you write the script? Uh, you, you, you know, was that, the, you know, a moment where you thought, do you know what, it's done. I'm happy with it. I mean, I would say never, never. I mean, we were still, you know, I was still tinkering with things while we were shooting. I mean, I, I did, I wrote the script over the course of probably about five years, but it's just rewriting, right? Writing is rewriting. So you're just constantly trying to tinker with it and, and, you know, if you change, especially with a script like this, right, it is a house of cards. So if you pull one piece out, the whole thing comes tumbling down. Um, so it, th- th- there was many times where I'm like, oh, no, this isn't working. And if this isn't working, then these five scenes don't work. So it's it's um, it's a constant restructuring of it. I, 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 when I when I finally landed on like, OK, this this is something that I'm at least okay to go to producers with and and try to get it made 
it, it, it basically stayed as that, you know, for the shooting, but you're always, you know, you're changing things based on different locations that you find or um, different people that you cast, you know, mm. that they, they might lean into a certain thing. So you go, let's go in that direction. You're sort of rewriting things the morning of. Mm. Um, so I'd say it's always, always a work in progress. <laughs> but as long as you have the real bones of the, the characters and the, the structure and you, you stick to the story, it's... Um, I mean, you know, I mean, all... I mean. There's a lot of detail in this mo- mo- movie, and it must have taken you so many, you know, you know, so much time to to write it because it's so cleverly done. It really, really is. I mean, I absolutely love how we're drawn into Barons and 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 Mar- Marmalade's world. I mean, how did you develop these characters? I mean, what sort of traits did you want them to have? And 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 you know. What differences from the page to the to the screen? I mean, did they turn out exactly how you wanted them to? Right. Yeah. I. I, I mean, it's. It's. It, it, there, there's. There's. There's something that I've always loved about storytelling, which is when it's a play within a play. Okay. Mm. So you know, going all the way back to Shakespeare, it's. It's. It, he was sort of the master of it, but it's. It's kind of this idea of pulling the audience along and letting them get a little bit ahead of the story and then going the opposite direction. So then they're kind of behind the story. So you're always playing this um, sort of catch up game. And I, I was I was fascinated with that sort of structurally to see if I could pull that off. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of detail in there. There's a lot of little Easter eggs along the way that hopefully people will find as they rewatch the film. But um yeah, the, the, I, I knew using that structure that I would need actors with a duality. So people who could play sort of different sides um, and, and could, you know, that, that's part of it is, is playing into these tropes a little bit, playing into these stereotypes. And right when the audience is thinking, well, yeah, OK, I've seen this before, then you go in the opposite direction. So part of that was finding performance, performers with um, – you know, different gears to, to, to their craft, you know? And, and so luckily getting Joe, I, I, I knew right away that he was the right guy for the role because he just has a sort of this truthfulness on screen. This like inherent charm and sweetness that, that I, that we needed for Baron. Um, but you know, the challenge was that he had never done an accent before on screen. He, uh, had never done anything like quite character like this. So, uh, you know, we worked together and, and he was so collaborative and, and really went for it. And it just, um, you know, I mean, lives and dies on, on their relationship, you know. I mean, I've got to say, it's Joe's fine, fine, finest work to date, I've got to say, in this uh, movie. Yeah. movie. I, I, I think it's fantastic. I mean, um, I mean, this is your first outing as a director. Mm. So uh, being in front of the camera for so many years um, in so many stunning projects, do you feel it's helped you with how you you know you've approached di- 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 directing and getting the most out of the actors? Yeah, I mean, no question. You know, I think that that was I when I wrote this, I had no intentions of directing it. Quite truthfully, I I, I, I you know I I just really wanted to focus on the writing of it. And eventually, someone said, "Well, why don't you direct it?" You know, I thought me, I <laughs> I had never directed anything, but I I knew this world and these characters obviously so well. They 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 came straight from my brain. So I, the more that I sunk into that, I thought, well, I've, I've been on so many sets as an actor. I've worked with so many different directors. Um, there's no question that I, I speak in a- actor's language. So directing actors to me was very secondhand. Um, it was just the other parts of the project that I'd never seen before, which were pre-production and post-production. Um, but I, I, I understand the the how sets work and the different positions of people so that came quite naturally and and i i really enjoyed that you know i loved having as an actor you don't you don't retain uh, a lot of control you know you mm-hmm. come in the world is already built you show up you're like oh wow these sets you know they, they've spent months and months on this stuff and then you just show up you do your work and then they're like thank you very much and you leave and then they're going to do months and months of editing and sound and you know everything else. By this time you see the film, it's like, oh wow, that's that's what they did with my performance. You know, it's like sometimes it can feel very different than than what your experience was. Whereas with directing, you sort of retain a lot more control, obviously, mm-hmm. and uh, you get to sort of craft it a lot more. So I, I really enjoyed that. 
I mean, I don't know if this is true. I've read this, but um, you shot the movie over 19 days. Is that correct? That because is if, true. If it yeah. is, how on earth did you make that work? Because 19 <laughs> days is crazy. Because yeah. the typical, you know, film shoot is two to three months, say. Yeah, so 19 easily. days. How did you make that work? Yeah, I. You know, um, I, it, we had to get very, very inventive. You know, I'll say we had we had 40 plus locations in 19 days. So you know, wow. it, it is possible wow. to make a film in 19 days, but usually they they're in very limited locations. You know, you you'll find a lot of horror films, especially, take place in one house or you know one just one location. So I knew we had our work cut out for us. Um, we. You know, it, it's just all about scheduling and 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 getting uh, very smart about how you can jump around really quickly. You know, so we would find a main street in a town, and we were like, "Oh, we could shoot. We could use that as the tattoo parlor, and then go across the street and use that as the barber or whatever, and then go back across the street for this." And so they're they're basically redressing sets as we like bounce back and forth. But I mean. It, it was crazy. It was unbelievable. I, I, I'm, I'm quite shocked at what we were able to accomplish in such a short amount of time and still have it hold its integrity and, you know, feel like a bigger film than it is. I mean, it's quite shocking. These Hollywood studios spend multi-million pound budgets and, and do this shoot, shoot, shooting and yeah. you do this amazing movie over 19 days and this mo movie trumps the majority of them. So... So you've obviously done a great job. I mean, I can only imagine the journey from writing the film to shooting it to finally seeing the finished article in its full glory was such yeah. a proud moment for you. I mean, what's been the proudest moment of shooting Marmalade? It's very, it's, it, it, it remains extremely surreal. I mean, I... I I, I, I still, it, it, it feels like an out of body experience. It really does. I mean, it, it's also been a long time in the making and it hasn't yet still come out, you know? So we're still, uh, I, I, it feels like it's, oh, well, it's never actually going to see the light of day, but it, 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 sure enough, it will very shortly here. But, um, I think the most surreal moment was the first day of shooting. You know, you sort of, you, you prepare so much and you're in so many meetings and you're casting and you're making props and you're deciding on so many different things um, that you're, you kind of have blinders on that you're really just focused on, okay, we've got to do this. We've got to do this. We've got to meet this, this time frame. And by the time you sit there, you take a deep breath and you yell action and then you're watching a monitor and here's these people saying the words that you mm -hmm. created from characters that you created in an environment that you created that, um, th that it, it was, it was like bringing a dream to life. I mean, it, it really, there's no other way to say it. It's like, oh my gosh. It's magic. That's, that's, it's magic. That's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's got to be such an amazing yeah. feeling. I mean, having seen the film and its perfection from start to finish, it really is. Um, you know, what is the magic source? What makes this film so damn good? I mean, what would my you God. say is the magic source? I, I think, I think um, you know, retaining the aesthetic of the film was always important to me. So it's, you know, I, I love those movies of the eighties and nineties and kind of this pulpy, really fun ride. Um, but this is, this is a very specific world, just like those, those films had. So I, I, I wanted to make sure that every detail was accounted for, you know, I mean, especially with a small film like this and we have a limited budget, you do, you have to, come up with things in, in, in different strategical ways. So it's, it was kind of, you know, I was working with the prop master and building props at night during the shoot and, you know, kind of tinkering with things, but it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it's about how you get everybody on set to make sure that we're all making the same film, you know, mm. and just retaining that, um, the look of the film, the feel of it, the tone, the rhythm of it. Um, and certainly, you know, things change as you go, but, but it's, um, you know, just thinking on the fly and, and making sure that we're we're still living in that in that same in, same world. So we've just got time for just one more question. Question: um, mm -hmm. What would you like audiences to come away with after seeing this movie? You know, I think it's just like it's a fun, entertaining ride. That's what you know. I'm I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here, and we're not, um, you know, we're not. Uh, trying to 
you know, it's just, it's entertainment. Like I just, I love films that are just a really fun escapist ride. And that's, that's what we set out to do. And I think that's what we have here. And you certainly have. It's a great film out on the 9th of Feb February. Thank you so much for coming on to the show and having a chat. Look after yourself and keep super. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you. <laughs>